Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to part five of uh, Chris's Choice series. These are the eight inks that I got interested in during the 30 inks 30 days challenge last month, September 2018. Um, here it is. It's a uh, J. Arbonne Violet Pensy. And it's kind of a light purple, kind of a violet, uh, or like a lavender almost, and it's really an interesting ink. I think you'll be interested in what happens with it when we write with it and stuff. So let's let's see. Let's start with the usual here. We'll put this ink for today into the bath test while I'm talking. There we go, and see what we get at the end. I'm really interested to see because of how this behaved in several other different applications. Um, and then the last ink that we covered was Pelican Edelstein Topaz. There was a, a video in between where I covered what's in the current ink flight uh, box, but this is the last one and this is the outcome. You can read it, you can see it, but it's light and so you lose most everything uh, off of it. But very interesting that you can actually still read it. So <laughs> there's that. Okay, so let's jump right in here and see how it did in the Rhodia Gold book. Um, here it is, right over here. Um, this is really interesting. Now, someone named Matthew inspired me on this color. So, I believe a viewer. And then another viewer sent me a little bottle that was almost full. This is a 10 mil bottle. And I just chose to put it into... Uh, these vials because that way they'd fit in my storage exactly but but these are cute little bottles that it comes in and I did a lot of research uh, and found you can get them you can get this ink in uh, different sizes so but I liked the option I liked was gold spot because they had for six dollars the 10 mil bottles just like that little one I just showed you and then I also noted that at jet pens then for twelve dollars you could get thirty Mill. So you're getting a better ec economy with the larger bottle, but at the same time, many of us who like to have several different colors might still like this is a good option here, I think, in my opinion. So, And then here, here it is, and, and all of this was written in the serendipity uh, with a broad yo-wo nib. And my first impressions are it's very pretty. It plays tricks on you because when you put it down on the paper... It's extremely um, darker and brighter. And then it dries this real pretty uh, lighter, kind of a little bit flatter. But it's a very, very interesting ink in art, too, and we'll see that in a minute. Um, it flows extremely smooth. This is really the best quality of this ink, I think, is how smooth it flows out of the pen. Um, I would like to actually try it in a, in a fine nib because I'm thinking that it might be one of those inks where you can kind of compensate for the nib being what I might say dry or too fine. And, and I'm not a fine nib person unless the ink comes out real good. Like in the shark pens, I like it. So, oh dear, I could talk all day about one little aspect. But let's move on to some more um, paper. This is the Cafe Note from um, Nanami Paper Company. And it is the seven millimeter rule notebook. And I love it, I just, boy, those are hard to get my hands on, it seems like. Uh, you can find now on Amazon the dot grid, but it's a little hard to get hold of. Okay, so for two days now, I've been writing with it because I had that interruption, that different video to do. And I, I didn't want to change color till I changed onto the next one in this series. So I like how this looks when it's dry. It's uh, You have no concern about it still looking purple because it's light enough. It doesn't, in any light, it doesn't look black or, you know, really terrible. So that's an interesting thing. In fact, we'll see here in a minute that I just, I truly do think that it uh, has a lot in common with Monteverde Purple Rain. And there's a few others too where uh, it's nice and bright even though it dries lighter. So, and things are going along really well for me in my uh, intermittent fasting and low carb. Um, I could do a whole video about that and probably will somewhere, maybe on Instagram or something, uh, because it's, it's a life changer and it's really, really good. Not without its little quirks, but it's been really good. Let's see. Okay, here's the envelope. 
Ooh, look at that. We're going to be able to read that. I can predict that now because that's how so many of them have been when I could read it at this stage. So that's neat. Amp had security envelope. Went right on nice and smooth. Um, obviously feathers a little. You could see that here and there. That E on the end it shows a particularly <laughs> feathersome spot. Um, okay, but we're doing that mainly for the water test. And then I wrote a letter today to a pen pal who I got through Incorimo last year with this color. And it looked great on this Tamoy River 52 gram paper. I was pleased with it. Um, and here's the Loistrum. Whoops, that's Willie down below there knocking on the... Hello, Willie. <laughs> I got a story about him at the end. It's a good story, but <laughs> there it is. And I thought it looked really nice on here. Um... You know, interesting how we don't always want it to be just dark, dark purple because it fools you and makes it look black. So that's something to consider with this ink. At first I didn't know whether I'd like it because I thought it would be too light. And here it is on the Claire Fontaine uh, 90 gram paper. Looks real good. It's got a little bit of shading. I can see it especially there and a couple other spots. It's nice, but it's very subtle ink. So those of you who like that, this this is one of those. Um, here it is on Rhodia Dot Pad. Let me hold it up a little so you could see it better. There we go. Nice, really nice quality paper like the Claire Fontaine. Looks good. Um, and same story on CVS Caliber Paper. It does lighten up a little bit more even. So you get even more of a pastel, <laughs> lavender -y kind of color. Let's see if we could compare them. I think we can if I just put them... See, it's, on the left is Rhodia Dot Grid, and it, it is, you could tell even by, even with the camera and everything else, that it's lighter on CVS paper. And then, um, flowed really well onto uh, Office Depot College Ruled Notebook there, my daily writer. Okay, let's see how about bleed through. No bleed through. So, and there wasn't on anything else either. This is the one that I worry about usually, because it does take in so much ink. Now, we got a real lot to look at as far as color color comparisons. So let me push this kind of over here. Um, and there's all kinds of story behind this. But <laughs> Okay, so I was trying out a new paper. So this is the first color comparison panel I did. And I have to hold it up because it's smaller. And there's a reason for that. But um, here it is up here. And I was bringing out just about everything I had. Please excuse this problem here. These are the same inks. I pulled it out twice. <laughs> Instead of kind of putting it aside, I had put it back in my uh, uh, shell box and pulled it out again. But <laughs> that's how much it looks like it, I guess. Or I thought it did. Um, Montegrappa Violet was much more... It didn't move around a whole lot the way um, Violet Pensy did. So, um, Wow. Some interesting comparisons here, really. I thought that we were getting the closest with Diamine Lavender in my collection of little inks. But then when I got out some of the older panels, um, and we'll do another comparison here in a minute. Whoops, I hate to put shadows there. I just Nothing really looks just like it in what I have. That's what I thought was really interesting. And I really thought for... A minute there that the Noodler's Polar Purple would, but no, it's much more of a, a different shade. It, it's, uh, I don't even know how to describe it there, but you can see. You can see how different it is. You've got a, you got a much brighter and lighter kind of a shade there. So, um, wasn't that amazing? I like what that did when it, when I put water. The Diamine Amazing Amethyst. It was, it looked almost dirty though. It was funny looking. <laughs> But let's get out, let's go ahead and go to the next thing that I did, which was, I put it onto here so that we could just easily go from panel to panel and see how it did really compare. So here it is, um, it even, we'll compare it side by side. You see, this is a different watercolor paper. This is the Canson that I've been using all along. And then this little one here, it's very similar, but there is slight difference, I think, in how it went on there. This here is a new one that I'll show you after. It's uh, Master's Touch from Hobby Lobby. So, we'll move that again. Let's. I just wanted to compare it with Purple Rain. There really isn't much of a comparison because 
you're getting over there toward magenta and it's it's a brighter brighter purple but I guess maybe as it goes on it reminded me quite a bit of that okay and then here we've got uh, diatromentous magenta violet to the left there <laughs> it just isn't not getting very far so let's move to the next one I have quite a few of these now huh <sighs> well purple rain we just looked at Bunga Box Lamont. This is mainly for people that may have one of these inks and can see what a drastic difference this is. Okay, here's uh, here's one many of us have. Uh, Diamine Imperial Purple. Uh, just no comparing it. It's so much lighter. Okay, now that's the, this is the one that I most wanted to bring to your attention. Roaring Klinger Casia. What I see, and I, I could be wrong, but what I see is that this is a lighter of this of a very similar shape you know uh color family I, I think that's the way to say it and some of it that comes out you can almost see that but in the middle sections where you start to see the real lavender come out um that's just something where i think i would use both things kind of i would use them in conjunction or something when i wanted the darker of a very very similar you know, I don't have much terminology. I never took art past high school, so, you know, I've just got what I go by kind of instinct-wise. Now, this is a new one that I got a free with purchase. Uh, Birmingham Andy Warhol Pop Art Purple. <laughs> I just thought it was interesting to see how different that was. And, of course, everything else on here, too. I just wasn't finding anything. Uh, the closest, really... Gosh, that's a toss-up. Uh, it's really a toss-up. I, I probably the diamine lavender was the closest on the original panel down here. It seemed like to me of what I have, but then again, that's just it's just very close. That's all. <laughs> so there's that. Now I had a couple questions about paper, so I just wanted to answer them right here, right now. So this is what I've been using all along. Uh, so all of these larger panels like this are cut down from this uh, 9 by 12 I cut them down to 9 by 9 and then I have those strips that I use for things like this where I want to have a movable one or something like that. And then uh, I just happened upon a different kind the other day and I decided I'd try it. And this is 8 by 8. I was a little, you know, I wished it had been 9x9 nine nine because then it would be the same. And this is probably just going to wind up being experimental paper for me. But what happened was it was uh, it was on sale 50% off. And it only started at uh, $3.99. So I got it for $2.15 and I wanted to try it. Because it has a different texture. But I really liked it for this. I mean, certainly there's nothing wrong with this. What I could have done is just keep it the original size and you know, done my nine grid right on the eight by eight. That, it, that's what I should have done, but I got too far down the rabbit hole on this, and then I ran out of time. So this is what we have for today, but I will definitely be trying to do the larger ones. I like them better. They work better, but I just thought I'd throw that in there for anybody who wanted to see you. There's some alternative, really good price alternatives, and even if I hadn't got the 50% off, there was a, a coupon. Uh, that I had and I still have it now because of that. Okay, so next I like to show you when I do stuff in my art journal. This is the, uh, oh, this is my current art journal. And this is way different. Usually my art journal stuff is is quite a bit different. I've kind of stuck to one process. But this is the visual journal with 140 pound watercolor paper. And this is how this little ink, this um, violet pensy, reacted to me putting down water and then one drop of of ink it, it's so flowy that it just took off I mean it was of all the ones I've done so far and I've showed y'all quite a few it was incredible how fast it moved and what it did here I mean look at that I don't even know how that was happened and, and you get a little of that here possibly there was more water on this one so this one just Wow, I, I don't know about you, but I like this. This is cool. Now, the camera may be darkening this just slightly, but it isn't a lot. Let me see if I can put it toward the... The natural light is to the left of me. 
Um, so there's just a slight darkening. So you're getting pretty accurate what I'm seeing. So I thought that was cool. Oh my goodness. Uh, lots of fun. And that's the Nick Stewart. Uh, that's what inspired it was, you know, learning a little bit about it on his website. <laughs> I have no skill compared to him. He's an artist, but I, I love it. I love it a lot. So, um, what is next? in this series, which should be the next video, unless something else strikes me that, that I don't know about right now, will be Monteverde Rose Noir. Uh, again, we're departing. We're, we're getting some really unique uh, inks, and I would have thought at first glance, I've said that before, that they were so similar, but no, they're really not. So this will be, let's see, what, what did I just say? I just said what ink we were on. I, I believe we were, that was number six. No. Hold on, let me make sure. Five. That was number five, so this will be number six. So we're moving along, which is good, because I want to talk about what's next. Um, so next will be this one, Monteverde Rose Noir. But then I've also got, in my mind, what I want to do next. And then I want to hear from you all if you have something else in mind or something else has interested you more. Um, let me know. But... Just at this point right now, what I think we'll do is go ahead and we'll visit Ink Flight 21, the October Ink Flight, because these are another of my, I mean, this is my favorite, really, this is my favorite ink um, maker, is Robert Oster, and these all look so, so interesting. And the fact that we are leading up to holidays, and we've got green and red, we can't go wrong, really, and we've got another kind of a fall color here. And I love blue. I think a lot of us do. And here we've got this one that's just amazing. Oh my goodness. So I can't help myself unless I hear otherwise. Unless I hear that there's something you just got to see first. I think we'll do this. And um, I got them all, all ready to go. You know, as far as... Uh, good, I'm going to be working with a 2 mil sample. So thank goodness for the serendipity pen. But that's what's next. Um, we have just the three... Uh, which usually represents three days, but right now we're kind of in a in a in a real uh, a nice cold front and a lot going on here. So I can't make a promise that that there will be a video every day. It, there's going to be times when I have to work on the panels and write with the ink a little longer, and it it may take me longer. So thank you for being here, and thank you for all the encouraging, um, you know, messages and emails and everything i've got to do another thank you video i got got that coming <laughs> and um the other thing is i it does not escape my notice that there are now 800 subscribers which i could have never never expected i was like like a kid in a candy store when i got 100 subscribers so th this is kind of out of my imagination but i appreciate you because that's you that's you guys and i, I appreciate it very much um uh, you know, having uh, pen friends, more pen friends is what it amounts to for me. So, okay, I got to go. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.